Aloha and welcome to the latest episode of Telehealth in Hawaii. My name is Vikram Acharya. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Cloudwell Health, Hawaii's only all physician founded telemedicine healthcare delivery organization. This month is Kidney Awareness Month. And to learn more about our kidneys, to learn more about kidney awareness, is a nephrologist, a kidney doctor, Dr. Ari Gans. Dr. Gans, how are you today? Good, good, thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. And uh, thanks so much for having me uh, today. Um, thanks for uh, the invite, especially in this uh, uh, special month about the kidneys, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for being on the show, Dr. Gans. We appreciate your time. To get things started, so you're a practicing kidney doctor in Hawaii. Tell, tell me a little bit about your background, where you're from, and what brought you to Hawaii? Oh, for sure. Uh, well, it's a very uh, um, interesting uh, last few years. I, uh, I'm originally from El Salvador uh, in uh, Central America. I went to do my residency and fellowship in uh, New York State, uh, different programs over there. Um, so I, I lived there for about almost eight years. And um, when I finished my training, uh, I was looking at uh, a few options. And thank God, to be honest, uh, we came to Hawaii and uh, it's been great so far. I mean, uh, the weather is amazing. It's uh, I'm, I'm sure you, 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 you know that already. And um, it's, it's just so much like home. Um, very family oriented, the weather, Everything is great, uh, actually. So very happy to be here. <laughs> yeah. Now yeah. you're um, you're a nephrologist, so you you specialize in uh, taking care of, of people's kidneys, you know. And it being Kidney Awareness Month, can you can you talk to me a little bit about uh, the role of the nephrologist in managing the kidneys, what they do, how they work with other doctors to make sure someone is as healthy as possible. Uh, for sure. So uh, we'll love it. Um, so basically, what so kidneys, uh, starting from the beginning, will be basically we have two of them, and uh, their main job is to clean our blood. Mm -hmm. They clean our blood, they get rid of toxins, they uh, control our water balance inside our, our, our body, our metabolism. They, they do a lot of other things, uh, but those are why they are most commonly known. And um, we as kidney doctors, we see uh, such a vast uh, disease in, in the kidney that is only originating at the kidney or that is simply affected from any other medical problems. And uh, um, kidneys, uh, they're, very strong, but uh, I want to say very sensitive to major changes of our organism. And uh, it just unfortunately so happens that when there's a lot of other problems going on that maybe are not originated at the kidney, the kidney can get hurt. So that's when we, as a specialist of the kidney, we focus on trying to see how we can, one, uh, find out if there's a kidney problem. Two, how can we protect the kidney? And three, how we can uh, get that kidney in better shape. And uh, as a fourth option, I would probably add uh, how we can treat whatever problem is going on as well. Um, and the way we do that is um, having a close connection, basically working side by side with your primary care provider, with uh, other specialists, uh, cardiology, I would say is very common. Uh, also rheumatology, uh, autoimmune disease doctors and such. So it, it, um, we have uh, a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, in nephrology, there's a lot of bread and butter happening with the kidneys, uh, kidney failure is so common. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of issues why that can happen. But um, basically, we like to stay in touch with the primary care doctor. We 
get a lot of help by them from them uh, by identifying when there's a kidney problem and uh, when is a good time to come to us so we can start doing some changes for the better. Yeah. Now, um, what types of tests or scans are done to to check the kidneys? You know, if, if I come to you and say, you know, and my primary care doctor is concerned that I may have problems with my kidneys, what, what, what kinds of things would I expect when I see you and your team? Uh, correct. So essentially, the, the first step is say, when you're going to see your, your regular doctor, um, he can identify any decrease in your kidney function by a, uh, at the beginning of a medical of the kidney problem by a blood test, correct? And it's a, this blood test, uh, it's usually done on a routinely basis on almost all the patients by the primary care provider on a, basically every three months or every six months, at least once a year. It gets automatically done. It's part of the workup or, or monitoring uh, the patient's health. So your primary care doctor can identify that um, from, from the first day. And the issue is how severe that medical problem is. And then um, if it's very early, um, we, uh, our primary care providers, specifically in Hawaii, they are very capable on handling and, and trying to identify what's going on and how to treat it. But then, of course, when it becomes or, or it's a very serious problem, then they refer you to us. And then okay. at that point, it's very important for us to identify a lot of risk factors. And um, if anything, I, I think uh, we all should be aware um, as patients, you know, what is what are risk factors that I have in my life mm -hmm. that could actually hurt my kidneys? Mm. This can go from very serious things, uh, say uh, very bad high, uh, high blood pressure, very bad uh, blood sugar, diabetes, very bad cholesterol, or obesity has now in the last few decades has been associated with having kidney problems as well. Mm -hmm. to, the, to the other side of simply taking too many painkillers like uh, ibuprofen, like uh, naproxen, and, and, and all those type of fields. And, and so once we identify the risk factors, uh, we try to separate, okay, is there something that we can do to, to make that kidney not getting, not continue to get injured or not to continue to get failing? Mm -hmm. So we, we go through a detailed history with the patient. We try to find out all the medications that have been going on. We try to find out previous records from the patient. And it's very, um, it's very interesting because you can find a lot of information that it's actually, you know, people think, oh yeah, it's okay. I just took a few ibuprofen every now and then. But then when you look back, it's actually like 10 per month. <laughs> so definitely can, can hurt the kidney. Um, um, so we like to go through different stages of when a patient comes to us. One is, identifying those risk factors. Two, uh, we like to uh, modify those risk factors. And three, we like to start making interventions on, on a treatment plan to improve that kidney function if possible. Uh, but one of the main goals is if your kidney function has deteriorated, is to avoid the progression of that chronic kidney disease. Yeah. And when I mentioned Chronic kidney disease, I mean, we uh, chronic kidney disease is just the term that we say there is a kidney problem. And that chronic kidney disease could be for, it could be from multiple of reasons. It doesn't say why is your kidney failing. It's just saying that you do have chronic, uh, that you have kidney failure, that you have kidney problems. Um, so, yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it does start, though, it sounds like with that first test though, the importance of going to a primary care doctor and getting that kidney function test to start to really evaluate um, the baseline health of the kidney. Really, it starts with that, it sounds like. Correct, correct. It's one, it's so crucial because 
as as you can go for your uh, to your regular doctor just uh, for a common cold or you know uh, feeling tired or checking your vitamins or your cholesterol that test will get done almost i would say almost 90 above 99 percent of the times that you go and see your doctor then we will likely order this test and uh it's very important that as patients we also ask hey you know how is my kidney doing uh uh, is everything okay? And your, your doctor will go over with you through all those results. And if there's any kidney problems for sure, then it is definitely advisable to uh, find out how serious it is. Do you need to be seen by a kidney doctor and so on? So the first step, like exactly what you mentioned, is identifying is there a kidney problem? Mm. Because once we know, then we can start the workup. We can start finding out what's going on. We can figure it out. Can we fix it? Can we treat it? Can we cure it? Yeah. And, and that's very important. That, that's definitely the first thing, the first step from your yeah. exception point. <laughs> now, in Hawaii, uh, are rates of kidney disease potentially higher compared to other states? Um, or is and if so, what what why is that? Why why is uh, those rates potentially higher? Correct. So um, it's very very interesting what happens in Hawaii. We mm -hmm. have a lot of different uh, 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 the population, the community that we treat. Uh, it comes from different backgrounds. Um, uh, we have uh, Asian background. We have native uh, native Hawaiians. We have Pacific Islanders that come from all islands of the Pacific. And it's very interesting to see that mixed uh, population here because all of them, they have a different percentage of the, pop, of, of the community and all of them, they have, um, it seems that they seem to be very sensitive uh, on the kidney ones. Um, before there had been a lot of uh, uh, epidemiologic studies throughout the whole world, United States and in Hawaii as well, um, and it has been uh, the true prevalence of chronic kidney disease is very difficult to put a number into that. It has, it, it, there's no gross number, uh, how many patients and, and such per year. But um, in Hawaii, it is being reported, there was an analysis of native Hawaiians with Pacific Islanders, which was published in 2019 or 17, I believe, in which, uh, according to the data, uh, public records data analyzed at that time, they said that uh, from native Hawaiians, including Pacific Islanders, the, the ratio of, of uh, kidney problems could be up to eightfold more uh, versus uh, uh, Caucasians and uh, uh, other, other communities. So and, and it's very impressive. And one of the things that it was, and we know that in the United States, one of the first cause, the first cause of uh, having kidney problems is diabetes. Um, it actually, it seems that diabetes, the prevalence and incidence in Hawaii is very high. Mm. And that is what we believe is one of the main factors. Um, of course, we all love our food. Um, Food in the in the island, it's it's amazing, and um, it has something to do with uh, our dietary habits as well, our uh, predispositions of these medical problems, which it seems to be more sensitive on native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders as well. I see. Now, in the world of telehealth, if if I needed to see you. As a, as a nephrologist, could I have a very good medical visit just like the way we're talking now? And, and, and is that possible? It, it, it's a great question, especially through COVID times. And uh, we found out in our office uh, that we, we had to uh, provide and obviously continue to provide kidney care to our patients here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And through COVID, we uh, one of the, the silver lining of the situation was that we were um, 
putting ourselves up to speed with the technology and everything that we have available nowadays to provide that care, even if it wasn't a face-to-face -face visit, being in the same room, which we all love and like and miss still, mm. our office was able to run on a almost above 90, 95% of our, all of our visits were run through telemedicine. Excellent, wow. Actually, up, to, up until now, since that last wave of COVID was happening, oh, I would say more than 75% of our visits are still telemedicine. Mm. And one of the greatest impacts in telemedicine was that patients could be, there's some, uh, some parts of, the, of Hawaii that are very uh, remote and access is very limited. From other islands, that some sometimes people used to travel to, just to Oahu just to uh, have a sit down with us. Um, it, although we enjoy sitting with people and just talking about it and finding out face to face what's going on, you know, you build more rapport. Uh, I feel that we still have the capability of building up a relationship, and through telemedicine, it's been great because we are able to discuss, I'm able to meet not only with the patient, but also with their loved ones, their family members, side by side. And we can all be in the same room together, no matter where they are, talking and going through each of the medical case, through the medical records, all the labs, and coming up with a treatment plan uh, for that patient. And mm. so the great thing is that I feel like with telemedicine, we've been able to reach more patients uh, than that they were not uh, easy to get because they couldn't get to that doctor to see him at the office. No, with telemedicine now, we can have that access. And uh, it's just a matter of uh, connecting through your phone, through your tablet, through a computer. Um, if the patient has trouble doing it, we have a maybe a niece, a nephew, an uncle, mm. or somebody at home, at home who also knows how to operate the devices, and we can easily come in. Um, uh, we, we got them on the habits of, hey, can you check your blood pressure before we meet? Mm -hmm. So while we're sitting with them, so we can check those vital signs, um, we can examine how are they feeling, how are they doing? So it, it, it's been, an amazing breakthrough uh, for healthcare, I believe. Telemedicine has definitely given us so many more options. Yeah. And um, I think it's something that for sure is here to stay. So um, it's, been, it's been good. So our office is on full um, swing, able to tailor the patient needs. If it is a, a in, inpatient face-to-face uh, -face visit, we also have those patients that come in and we see them. And we also are completely ready to do a lot of telemedicine at the office. So, yes. That's wonderful that you're able to provide care so seamlessly between an in-person setting, the traditional setting, but also the virtual setting. Because I would think that if, if I were able to get my labs drawn before the visit and those labs uh, results are sent to you, then you will know all that when you see me, and it just makes it for a very productive visit. Correct, correct. It makes it very effective, to be honest, very effective. Um, we can share educational links with the patients through the chat box when we're doing telemedicine. Um, I can actually share my screen, show them the graph, how her kid, their kidney function is doing, up or down, or mm -hmm. what is that we can show, we can show them their chart, all their labs, not only by me talking to them about it, but I can actually show them. So it, it's, it's very nice, very useful. Now, if I wanted to uh, make my kidneys healthier, mm. what are some steps that I can take um, right now to make my kidneys healthier? Great, great question. So, um, Definitely, there's a lot of things that we can do. And everything starts uh, with uh, us individually. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, and what I mean by that is uh, having that um, simply heading us on a better health. And what we focus is, what I tell my patients is definitely, if you, you have to know yourself, your medical problems. Yeah? You may not have any medical problems. You may have high blood pressure, cholesterol, or, or whatever that is.
but there's a few things that you can do. One of the most common things, uh, and I keep mentioning this because it's very, very common, uh, over 15, 20 million of people in the United States, might, they, even more out there to say they, they use uh, pain medications. And um, it's really an issue because I have seen so many types of kidney failure by simply taking too many pain tubes. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that is something that uh, whatever medication you take, even if it's over the counter, you should be aware uh, to not to do the excess. If there's something that is bothering you too much, definitely you should touch base with your doctor, ask them, hey, is this medication safe and okay for me to take uh, regarding my kidneys? Um, so watching the medications that you uh, buy over the counter, it's important. Not all of them, all of them are safe in a, in, if you use them in an appropriate manner, but the excess of them might, might bring kidney problems. Um, second, I would say also run down through the medications that your primary doctor has been providing. Uh, uh, some of, all, of, all of the medications in medicine do have side effects. But we always, uh, your primary care doctor will always be checking your kidneys, making sure uh, some of them are being well. But um, just to make it clear, all of the medications in medicine have can have side effects. Not all of them have kidney side effects. So just to make that distinction clear. Now, proper hydration, it's fundamental uh, for your health. Uh, our body uh, composition is a lot of water in it. And uh, definitely, if, if you're running dry on your tank, basically, you're, you will be dehydrated, especially if you spend, uh, you, you will be surprised how many liters you can spend working under the sun. Uh, I have a lot of elderly patients who love to do their gardening outside, especially when the sun is hitting so strong. Make sure you're drinking water to the families. Make sure you guys are giving water to your uh, elder uh, and the family, making sure they're drinking enough water. How much water you should drink? Well, it really depends on the body size and, and so on. But as a general rule, you could say at least drinking uh, about 32, uh, probably even more, like uh, maybe 45 to 55 ounces per day. It's a good amount of, 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 of liquid. Um, so Hydration, very important to keep your kidneys healthy. Uh, verify that the medications that you're taking are not causing any damage or could cause any damage. Um, three, I would say how to keep your kidneys healthy. Know your problems. If you have high blood pressure, slow down on salty food. You know that low salt diet not only will help the blood pressure, but it also will help to preserve uh, uh, your kidneys from getting any damage if blood pressure goes high. Um, number four, this has not been a solid proof, but it, there's been signals that a high sugar content drinks may, may be an issue also with kidney failure. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, lose weight. Uh, I say this, uh, so the kidneys are like the, like the ones who do the cleaning in our house. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, they, they clean our whole body. So the bigger the body, the more cleaning they have to do. So mm -hmm. if we wait, it does help. So, so I like that analogy. Uh, that's a good. <laughs> yeah. That's good. So yeah, so there's uh, at least I would say staying well hydrated, watching your um, diet, uh, including a lot of vegetables, uh, it's very fundamental. That has also signaled to try to preserve kidney function on patients who have kidney, kidney disease um, and uh, avoid certain medications that could cause the problems as well. Then, very important, make sure you have your regular checkups with your primary care doctor who can detect any early signs of kidney problem. Yeah. It's funny, today is doctor's day. and. <laughs> I want to thank you. Oh. Happy Doctor's Day. You know, it's very hard to be a physician every day. And especially through the COVID-19 pandemic and the challenges on our healthcare system and our providers, 
Um, this must have been very challenging for you and your team. And um, but it sounds like with telemedicine, it made it much more seamless, uh, much easier for you to still talk to your patients. And it really does sound like telemedicine is pretty much the same as a regular visit. It's very effective. It, we get uh, patients get to access care that they need mm -hmm. um, much uh, easier. Uh, without taking a plane to Oahu and so on. And uh, I'm sure there's plenty of places in the mainland as well that we are benefiting from it. <clears throat> and um, no, thank you. Thank you so much for um, inviting um, Doctor's Day. I, I, I feel blessed. I have, really have to thank God for how he has um, supported us through all of this. And, um, we're very happy to help, and hopefully we can continue to help everybody in Hawaii as they need it, and uh, for sure. Um, the first thing of everything is education. So mm -hmm. thank you so much, uh, Vikram, for allowing me to share a little bit of, about what chronic kidney disease and kidney is. Um, everybody should be aware, and everybody should know that there are kidney specialists uh, to assist. And if it's not a face-to-face -face visit, telemedicine, it's always available. Yeah, I know. Thank you, Dr. Gans. It's just a real pleasure having you on the show. You know, your knowledge of the kidneys, being a physician on the front lines, treating all the residents in the state of Hawaii. Um, happy Doctor's Day. You know, happy Doctor's Day to you. Happy Doctor's Day to all your colleagues. And we appreciate you very much. Thank you for taking care of our Ohana. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.